Joining us from Russia is Roger Bennett. How are you, Roger? Oh, I'm, I'm, li- I'm live from the Bud Hotel in Moscow. How bad can life be? <laughs> I can just say, just so you can mentally picture it, Sergei Fedorov's aftershave is faintly smellable <laughs> all over this fine city. It's amazing <laughs> to be here for Vladimir Putin's soccer theme bar mitzvah, Rich. <laughs> Who's lighting the candles at that bar mitzvah, Roger? What do you think? Um, you're, th- that, is a, uh, that is a request you cannot turn down. It's been thus far England footballers. They are the ones who have shocked the world and probably even more shocked themselves by being the, uh, the kind of dark horse young wonders of this World Cup. But that moment you just played uh, on your show of Ronaldo, that pert show pony stepping up to take a penalty kick uh, and the ball had the temerity of allowing itself to be saved by the Iranian goalkeeper. That was Lionel Messi's finest finest, ha- and probably happiest moment of this World Cup so far. Wherever Messi is, I mean, and, and Argentina is going to take the pitch shortly. I mean, we saw prior to Argentina taking the pitch the last time, he just looked like he was swallowing his own vomit, Roger. I, I don't know how to read his body language because I don't I don't normally see him play uh, too many matches uh, ordinarily. Uh, is, is Messi spooked, do you think, going into this final well, match, Roger? I, I, I've, I've compared him to the, the process to what's happening. Lionel Messi, for your listeners, is the single greatest footballer I have ever seen in my lifetime. And that, that does not change. But what's happened in this world of weird, this World Cup, is that he's somehow morphed into Ralph Wiggum from The Simpsons. It's like there's been some kind of unbelievably weird uh, kind of body swap. And I can't quite understand it. He is a, a gentleman that can lacerate teams single-handedly when he wants to. But it, watching him in his first two games has been to see him absolutely drown. And I'll say... Coming to Moscow, I arrived here yesterday. It has changed my perspective on the whole thing. You know that sports teams are fragile cultures, and this Argentinian side have mutinied against their own coach. Uh, A little bit, I I made the show about the 1998 US team uh, at the World Cup, American fiasco, where they mutinied. um, Well, they all mutinied against each other, and then mutinied against their coach. It was a disaster. This is very much Argentinian fiasco. Hmm. But when you walk around the streets of Moscow, Rich, Messi's face is on pretty well anything that moves here. He's on the side of buses. He's in every shop window. He's painted on the side of houses in advertising commercials. Almost every three out of five television commercials have his little chirpy little Ewok face popping out and grinning at you. And you watch it and you realize just that never mind the sporting pressure of a, the whole of Argentina are watching this little man saying, you need to lead us to victory. The commercial pressure Never mind the pressure. He must be exhausted from shooting all these commercials. <laughs> and the, the weight of the jersey, they say in, in, in Argentina, the weight of the jersey is literally dragging him down. Roger Bennett, Men in Blazers, and you mentioned the American Fiasco podcast about the 1998 World uh, Cup meltdown by the U.S. men's national team. You can download it from WNYC Studios on podcast, uh, wherever podcasts are available. Uh, Roger, it's interesting, you know, uh, as you know now that you're an American citizen and you're attuned to the American sports fan is even better now. Uh, (laughs) Philadelphia Eagles fans uh, celebrating in a manner that they're not accustomed to. Washington Capitals fans feeling the same way. Is it possible that fans of uh, of England are feeling the same way right now, not not being able to compute what is actually happening on the pitch there in Russia. It's ex- it's exactly right. I mean, I I wouldn't quite go Philadelphia Eagle fan levels yet. We don't have to grease up the uh, the, the telephone <laughs> poles across England right yet. But a winning England, an optimistic England, a joyous England. I, I have never seen that before. With my, I've watched England a lot in my lifetime, and I have never seen an England play with smiles on their face. Truly, I mean, the English players are meant to feel doomed. They're meant to self-sabotage. They're meant to reinforce our sense of self-loathing. The, the, a, a national uh, realization that while we once had an empire and were truly kings of the world, we're now just an insignificant um, kind of tiny little scarf out there in the Atlantic. That's what we expect from our footballers. So to see this young team, and it is young, They've shattered the culture of these legends whose names, you, some of them you may know, Wayne Rooney, 
Steven Gerrard, who, who kind of uh, their whole goal on a football field was to not get beat too bad and please don't be the, the scapegoat target for the tabloid newspapers. This young team, they play joyously. They play with a real focus on entertaining, attacking, buccaneering football. And to see this young man whose name some of your listeners may recognize, Harry Kane, a young striker, who has been made captain, and he's thrived under the burden of captaincy, which is meant to be like a pair of concrete shoes for those doomed (laughs) to wear the captain's armband. It's honestly, I would say Duke of Wellington, I would say Winston Churchill, and I would say Harry Kane. He's in that ether, and I'm not being hyperbolic. I'm not exaggerating. He's uh, he's the Harry, uh, the what's-a-name probably meant to marry. (laughs) Roger Bennett here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, which is the best side that you've seen so far? It seems like, a, again, a wide wide open, parody-filled cup so far. So who do you think? It f- is. It's a, and it's also a, a World Cup of joyous um, attacking football. Normally, the smaller teams, Iran, Morocco, Peru, would just try and batten down the hatches and play, you know, focus on Buddy Ryan-style uh, defensive football, um, but they haven't. Maybe because America aren't in it, the world's one true superpower on the football field. They're like, you know what? America aren't in it. We've got no one to fear. So last night you saw Iran truly try and take down Portugal while at the same time Morocco showed no fear um, against Spain. So it is a very open, it's a World Cup that's been a marvel, the greatest World Cup of my lifetime, Rich. And I say the team that have truly caught the eye as Argentina, Falter, as Germany, uh, truly falter has been Mexico. I mean, a a remarkable team to watch. This is a team you you love curses in American sports. You know the the curse of the Bambino, the Madden curse. This is a team that in their last six World Cups, their last six has gone out at the very same round in ever more tragic ways. The, the round of sixteen, they're led by a Colombian manager, Juan Carlos Osorio, who has been despised by the Mexican fans. They've chanted for him to be fired. He shows no respect for the true legends of the team. He, he kind of benches them. He keeps tinkering with tactics. He, he, the, the relationship between the fans and him has really burnt out. He's come on our show a number of times, and he said, you know what, I'm only focused on my team. I don't care what the fans say. At this World Cup, the fans have chanted his name with glory as his team uh, shocked Germany uh, and then stopped South Korea with two very different performances, one counter-attacking, the other deeply aggressive uh, and controlling of the ball. They love his tinkering now. They love his, his creativity. And to watch a man vindicated uh, before the eyes of his own fans has been very moving humanly. And he's talked a lot about the job he wants in soccer, Juan Carlos Osorio, which is ultimately to be the U.S. manager and to think about what he could do with our nation, with our team, uh, with our players. It's hard not to watch Mexico thrive mm. under his watch and think what could be in the United States. And yet with Germany scoring one of the five stoppage time game-winning goals this World Cup, which is the most since 1966, Mexico could still be out. If it wasn't for that last goal by Germany, um, Mexico would be through right now. So there is a possibility somehow, some way of night of a nightmare scenario coming up when uh, when that group gets on the pitch Wednesday, Roger. Yeah, the Ger- the Germany-Sweden game, for those who didn't say it, Unbelievable. Sweden, Sweden were beating Germany. Germany are Germany are Darth Vader. You do, you do not beat Darth Vader very, very often. And Sweden had every chance of doing that and just wilted. The German, German are, are never more deadly uh, than when they are. Uh, their own mortality is exposed. And in the 95th minute, a piece of alchemy from uh, their midfielder, Tony Cruz, where he just lacerated the ball. It was almost like a drone strike into the corner. It was the closest I've ever seen to witnessing with my own eyes that Game of Thrones battle to the death between the Viper and the Mountain. Sweden's the Viper. Germany's the Mountain played out in real time. Um, it was crisis averted for the Germans, but their problems, and there really are problems. You, you see them in American sports, the locker rooms that are divided between the old guard um, and the new guard, between the kind of flash new newcomers and the more stoic veterans. They are a team that is utterly divided. There's a little bit of geopolitical flavor where their uh, their star midfielder, uh, a gentleman called Mesut Ozil, who's a, a, a German of, uh, of Turkish origin, posed with uh, the, the, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, right before the World Cup, a move that did not go down at all well. 
um, yeah. within Germany and has really created an incredible geopolitical locker room fissure. So the problems with Germany uh, will not go away. And it, this is going to be a World Cup where a team that has not won before very much could. There's a lot of, a lot of eyes on Belgium who are playing some of the most ripple, joyous, uh, true collective football. And so, uh, it, it, as I said earlier, Rich, this is the single greatest World Cup of my lifetime, and I just want it to be hooked right up to my veins. I love it. Me too. I've really been enjoying it. The last one for you, Roger Bennett, uh, sure. Men in Blazers. Uh, last one for you. Uh, you can't see uh, unless the Rich Eisen show is on in Russia, but unbeknownst to me. But I am, in <laughs> fact, asking this question, clutching my Bilf Life mug that you were kind enough to send me. You and Michael Davies sent me with the Men in Blazers uh, logo, uh, the crest uh, on the other side, Bilf Life, which uh, the B stands for bald. Everybody else, I think, can understand what the rest of it is. So I ask you this, Roger Bennett, how in the world do these players and refs and officials run around as they do for as long as they do, breaking as much of a sweat as they do, and their hair is perfect What is in the pomade? What are they using in their hair to keep the parts so chiseled throughout an entire World Cup match, Roger? I'm not sure I'm allowed to say it on the Rich Eisen Show television, (laughs) but I believe it's horse semen. (laughs) Is this is this is this verify is this a verifiable fact, Roger? Is it? Uh, fact. Yeah, they, it's, uh, it's, uh, they sell it here in, in Moscow in many stores. It's uh, in the FIFA shop. Uh, it is remarkable. And talking about FIFA, I do think the Rich Eisen show is on okay. in Russia. It's on probably at KGB headquarters. They're monitoring all of your words. They're monitoring all of your words very, very carefully, Rich. Well, I, 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 they have our phone number now. I mean, in, 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 so I'm, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to figure it out, Roger. I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm admittedly very jealous. They're, the hair is, the soccer hair is perfect. It never, it yeah, never tussles, never once. Baldness is truth, Rich Eyes, and baldness is truth. And you're a very, very, very handsome bald man. But sometimes I do look at these, these footballers. I mean, the, the Iranian team absolutely glistening and gorgeous last <laughs> night against the Spanish team. I, ultimately, I do think that football, um, I, I've always thought the World Cup is mm. just has become an incredible fusion of global sports, global television, the reach of television, and, uh, and, and commercial sponsorship. It's become an enormous billboard. But this World Cup, looking at the head, looking at Olivier Giroud, a Frenchman, run around the field, rippling, gorgeous, the perfect man, watching the Moroccan coach, Hervé <laughs> Renard, who looks yeah. like he's been ripped with his shirt open from the front cover of an Arlequin romance novel. And just like, <laughs> ultimately, football could just be a platform just for hair product at the end of the day. I, I, I may have been watching the wrong thing all of this time as a bald man. It's great to be with you. I love your I love your passion for the game, Rich. Thanks, Roger. Genuinely, genuinely. It's a, it's a remarkable... When, when we've got rich eyes and loving football, um, there's, there's not too much else that we need to win over. Oh, I love a it. true football in nation. And I told you, that, and I'll tell, I told Michael this, I'll tell you, I just love your guys' take on it. It's just so much fun, and your passion comes through too. And uh, it's certainly in the uh, encyclopedia, Blazer Tanica that you brought... And then, you know, let's let's chat again next week, Roger. I want to chat with you. I'd love it. We're the, we're the only two men holding football, uh, holding soccer back from truly taking off in this country, Rich. That's what we say about well, ourselves. Well, it's great to be with you. Now, Roger, you got horse racing fans interested. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Courage. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Okay. Courage. There's Roger Bennett, everybody. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.